sorry. My plan is to document <laughs> this outpouring that God has just put on to me. I want to send it to my wife and my father <laughs> because I realize I've not I've not been vocal enough when these things have happened to me. When the anointing of God has fallen and I've been given visions before, I was too scared to tell very many people. So I would just share them with my wife, my dad, and many times even my nephew, Jaden. I don't know why, but those are the ones that I've felt comfortable to share. When God gives me a vision, so many other people I know would, even if it was subconsciously, they would make me feel like I'm an idiot. Because I know there's nothing any more special about me than anybody else. And in fact, sometimes I wonder if because I messed up my life and I messed up my calling and I hit rock bottom so many times, sometimes I wonder if that's why God shows me some of the stuff he shows me. Because I've been through the wilderness. I've been to rock bottom. I've, I've kept the faith even whenever I lived without power, without heat in my house. I've busted up my dining room set and my table and chairs just to try to keep warm through another night. I've lived without food and without money. I've, I've been through rough stuff. And I, I wonder sometimes if that was my wilderness that, that I had to go through to prepare me to realize that there's nothing intellectually of myself, but it's just the Holy Spirit of God that gives me wisdom. That just like December 13th of last year, I married the love of my life. But on December the 10th, God gave me a vision of a virus that was gonna sweep the world. I told my nephew, I told my wife, I believe I told my brother Ben, I think I told him later, like in January, but God gave me the vision of the churches shut down and the, the masks and gloves and the worldwide freak out in uh, December of last year. I had my wife start taking notes and write down the vision that I saw because I didn't understand it. I didn't want to go to Facebook. I didn't want to go public on social media because I didn't know what any of it meant. And I didn't want to look like an idiot. But she wrote down the word Corona. Wrote down the lives worldwide and all the things that, that I, I was telling her in my vision that it was going to shut down the churches and people were going to live in fear and run. And, and there was a lot of details that I just, I don't really want to share right now, but my family knows about the visions that I've been getting. But today, God gave me something so powerful that I kind of feel guilty because I need to go back to the Bible and I need to read what it means. I don't know what it means. Yet, I know who he was in the Bible and I know the stories. I've read the Bible all the way through. But today, I've not been able to walk much. I've not been able to move much because my body's hurting so bad. And sometimes I notice in my weakest state is when God starts moving through me the most. Pop, I wonder if that's why some of the best songwriters in the church were the ones 
that were crippled laying flat on their back, unable to get out of their deathbeds, but they'd write songs like Be an Overcomer. Only cowards yield when the foe they meet on the battlefield. Never yield a step in the hottest fight, because God will give you help from the realms of light. In Jehovah's might, put the foe to flight. In the victor's crown, you shall wear it last. Songs like Be an Overcome are written by somebody who can't even overcome their illness. Can only be known as divine intervention. And a Holy Spirit guidance. Because nobody that lives with any disease or illness in their body ever feels like an overcomer. Until they die out to flesh enough. And allow God to fill their life and fill their heart. That's when you realize how great is our God. And that we are going to be victors. And that eternity is forever and earth is so temporary. But as humans, we get our minds flipped backwards. And we think that what we're going through or what we're dealing with right now is so permanent. When it's not, it's also temporary, yo. But, Dad, I don't know what it means yet. But God started pouring out this morning. I told Chrissy at lunch that I couldn't eat. I couldn't. I couldn't do anything. I, I've been so overwhelmed with pain today. From my sure it's a weather change, but... Uh, it's amazing. My clock just started playing Amazing Grace. But God spoke to me today. And I wanted to document it. That there is a big turnaround coming. Soon... And there's a there's an anointing that's falling. It's come after a lot of heartache and a lot of men of God, a lot of women of God have had their toughest years, their toughest decade, their toughest uh, time in life the last few years because the enemy was trying everything he could to take a lot of people out to discourage men of God and women of God from, from living in victory and, and, and continuing their work in the church, building the kingdom of God. And so many, so many people have gotten discouraged because they're looking at the local church level and they're looking at, at lower, lower attendance numbers and smaller offering plates and, and the struggle of, of trying to maintain facilities and paying the bills when there's not as many people excited about coming to church. And it's taken a toll on a lot of my pastor friends. I know a lot of them, their churches have closed their doors and they're shutting down. But God started pouring into me today. And he said that the evil spirits in this world, the demonic control that has gotten into the lives of so many people with power has put a mask and a muzzle on the church, the local church. And it's silenced so many Christians as they hide in fear and run muzzled and covered up so afraid of something that has been amplified so great and so big to put fear in the hearts of man. And God said that my church is alive and well, and my church will not be muzzled anymore. And that as soon as we get past the turn of the year, I feel like the beginning of next year, we're going to see a great revival. It's not going to be like we've always thought. It's not going to be little churches that are just starting to get full. It's going to be worldwide. It's going to be the rising up. 
Many are called, but few are chosen. It's going to be the few that rise up. And the thing I need to research more in the Bible, because I don't realize, I don't really know what all it means. But God kept telling me this morning that just like John the Baptist had to go into the wilderness, and just like others, I think even Paul had to go into the wilderness. He was, he was having to be detoxified from the world and all of its influence. But God was telling me that my wilderness time is about over. And I don't, I don't necessarily know what all that means. I don't know if that means that the divine healing might be on the way for me. I've lived for two and a half decades with so much illness in my body. And I've been prayed for so many times, and I believe in miracles. I've seen so many miracles, Papa, you even know. Even my wife, Chrissy, has seen so many miracles in the time we've been together. That God moves. When we pray and we believe and we have faith, we see divine intervention constantly. But God started telling me that there is going to be, there is going to be divine healing released. There's going to be strongholds broken. That there's going to be a, a rising, a beginning of the of an end time revival that 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 will blow our minds with what we see that God begins to do in my mind. Like I, I went back to think about promise keepers there for a while. It was so huge and powerful and full stadiums were filled up with men who are coming out hungry for God and they would begin singing. And I don't even know whatever happened with promise keepers, but in my prayer this morning, when I saw that vision of how hungry God's people were, even then, and we're not seeing a lot of that right now because we don't have any kind of news media uh, opportunity to, to show the good things and the miracles and the, the hungry people of God that are really still uh, working towards this revival, this move of God. But immediately in my prayer, I felt like the enemy said, everything that begins to be great because mankind, because human nature is broken and we fall and we make mistakes. The enemy started gloating and started saying, just like big organizations and big churches that have crumbled because of divorce or, or sin or affairs, uh, pastors who have been fired and kicked out of the ministry because they, they, they were overtaken with a uh, spirit, either Jezebel spirit or lust spirits and, and uh, ran off with other women. And that the devil was just gloating, almost bragging to me that how he has won so many things and shut down so many big moves of God that were pure, that were good. And he started gloating, started reminding me of, of how I failed and how I fell when I was called to ministry and my sin and my flesh did not live up to my calling. And I reminded that devil real quick that God delivered me. And I've been a changed man and a delivered man for almost 15 years of trying to follow everything God would have me do. And the devil has sent a lot of things in my path, a lot of, uh, of times that, that people who surrendered their lives over to demons tried to shut me down, tried to take me out. And to this day, I still... I am tormented by demonic people that, that, that literally make it their life's mission to try to stop God's work in my life. But God started pouring out on me and told me that he has a special Elijah anointing. And I don't know if that's even in the Bible, if there's any such thing called an Elijah anointing, but that God was saying the special spirit that he had placed on Elijah. And John the Baptist, that was another one that was brought up in my time of prayer. This special spirit. And God started showing me some of the pastor friends of mine 
who have been attacked. And some have failed, some have fallen, some almost literally took their own lives. Uh, just in the last few months, men that I'm so close to that I love. And God started showing me these men in my prayer time as the anointing was flowing and God was moving. And he was saying these people were strategically attacked because their part and their role in the end time revival, this great push of God's people to reach the world for the cause of Christ. That these were key and vital people that God has chosen and he's put this special anointing on their lives. This anointing that Elijah had, this anointing that was placed on John the Baptist. And God was showing me, revealing to me that they have suffered. They have gone through hell, literally, because the enemy was trying to just unleash everything hell could offer at these people from torment and spirits and anger and lust and depression and, and just trying everything they could to destroy these key people that are supposed to be supposed to be vital roles for some great move of God that's starting. And I don't know why, but I just I just felt like these next few months finishing out this year, we're gonna. We've seen such a horrible violence and ridiculous upthrow and uproar of evil, but I feel like it's coming to an end. I feel like, like heaven's gates are about to open and flood this earth. I feel like there's going to be an anointing that starts dropping on men of God and women of God who are who are stepping up to their calling, saying, "I'm going to accept." Whatever it means, whether I have my children hate me or whether I have my friends and family turn against me, God, I will follow your will. I will accept your anointing, your calling on my life at every cost, at any cost. People who have been through hell and been through horrible times in life such suffered great loss and torment in their spirit. When given the choice, they're always going to want to go to God. They're always going to want to avoid the flesh because they know in the flesh how bad they've suffered. But in the spirit, they know they can be an overcomer. And so I believe God strategically allows the wilderness experiences. He allows the being flat on the back experiences. The torment, emotional pain, and, and, and all these things because it is refining an anointing and an Elijah spirit. It's a special anointing. Now, I should have looked that up before I made this video, but I just didn't want to forget anything. But it's about to turn around. We're about to see some serious miracles and a move of God like we've always dreamed of. Pop, this New Testament church that you've lived the vision of is coming to fruition, not in a local building or inside four walls, but the New Testament church is about to explode in a revival at the turn of the year, starting, I believe, in January even. Just a few months away, God just kept showing me short time, a short time. I don't have exact dates. I mean, when God gave me the vision of the corona, he gave me the word corona, and we didn't even know why. I told my wife, I said, it's a beer. Uh, I've never even tried. I Googled it, and some definition was something about galaxy. I said, I don't know why this word corona keeps coming in my vision. But every single detail of that vision came true. Every single vision. And every note my wife wrote down was proven that it happened months later after my vision. And we've had several, several since then that have all come true. But I don't know why God allows me to go through the things I go through. I don't know why he allows me to see the things that I see. But I want 
to be obedient and no longer keep them quiet to myself. I want to at least document them and send them to my dad and have my wife have a documented video that today, whatever this date is, I don't even know what, I think it's a Monday. I think we're in October, I don't even know. September, I think, September. But God moved in such a huge way today and poured out his spirit on me on a day when I can't even get up and shout or dance around the house and I wanted to so badly. But it's weird that I, it seems like my lowest times when I'm broken and hurting the most in the flesh is the weak, weakest the most as far as physical ability. Those are the days that it seems like God pours out more and makes me realize probably why the ones stricken to their beds could write songs like they wrote because they were hearing words from God that the busy people who are so used to being blessed and walking around and doing everything they need to do were so busy with their daily lives and their chores and the bills and fixing their house, their car, whatever. And here's a crippled person in a bed getting words like be an overcomer. But I think it's probably because God gets their attention a little, little more directly. So I guess what I'm saying is I need to rejoice on the days that I am hurting the most and the weakest and the diseases in my body have flared the most because I, I know the way it works. Those are the days I'm going to be connected to God the greatest. I just wanted to send this to y'all, not, not for it to be put out because obviously I didn't know I was going to ramble 22 minutes. But I just wanted to get it off my chest and get it documented. That God's moving and he's doing something. He's stirring. And just hang on a little while longer. And we're going to see all of heaven's gates opened up. And we're going to see this, the violence and, and stuff snuffed out. We're going to see the demonic control of, of so many officials and heads of states. We're going to see them replaced as they fall from their lofty positions like King Nebuchadnezzar. We might see them go crazy like he had to roam around the fields eating grass like the oxen. We're going we're gonna to see these evil people who, who thought the devil was going to make them famous and give them high places. We're going to see them struck down. And we're going to see God rise up people that he's anointed with the Elijah spirit, the anointing of Elijah, the same anointing. I know it's the anointing of God. I don't know why. In my vision, God just showed me the anointing of Elijah. I think it just means the same anointing. There are the same gifts or whatever God placed on Elijah. I'll go back and I'll study it now because I don't understand it. Just like I didn't understand Corona, but we do now. But for some reason, the Elijah anointing is what just kept being given to me. That it was, it was these especially all these men and women of God that I know have fallen and struggled and almost gave up is because the devil turned up the heat 20 times over because they too were given this anointing of Elijah, the spirit of Elijah for this end time revival, this great move of God that's going to break loose right through the beginning of the year next year. And it's not going to be like I said, it's not going to be the little tiny churches. I saw stadiums filling. I saw movie theaters that couldn't sell any movie tickets to people anymore, but they were full of people that were turning them into to churches and using them to worship God. As every arena and every facility filled with God's people, like Billy Graham conferences all the time kind of thing. And God just kept pouring into me that the, the prophecies that have been prof prophesied over me for the last 20 years was that I was going to be a vital role in the end time revival while other people were thinking I wouldn't even live that long because of the diseases in my body but yet the prophecies kept coming forward every town I've ever lived in every place that I've ever every state that I've ever done revivals in everybody there was always somebody that would walk up and give me the prophecy that 
God has told me to tell you, you are going to be a vital role of the end time revival, a key member and, and others that are surrounding you. So I believe it's these men and women of God that almost gave up, that, that were crumbling, that shut down churches and almost quit just because that was, that was the wilderness and the time that God needed them to go through so that they could, they could be able to, to look back to Christ no matter what happens, no matter who rejects them, no matter who leaves them, no matter who hates them, even if it's their own spouses or children or siblings or family rejects them, they're still going to choose Christ through this last great push. I'm not saying that means God's coming back in an exact time frame or whatever. I, I don't believe anybody knows the day or the hour because that's what the Bible says, but I, I feel strongly that we're in the last push the last big move, the beginning of the end time revival, I believe starts. I believe it's already been preparing through things like the Florida Georgia line, bringing Chris Tomlin on stage and Kanye West, whether, whether he falls off the wagon or not tomorrow, I know God used him in part of this preparing the people to open their hearts. These different movie stars are coming forward proclaiming this that, that God is good and we need to turn our nation back to Christ. They've, pre they've been preparing the way for this great last move of God that's about to happen. I just wanted this documented because it's about to become so beautiful. And all, all how right now, everything, every time we turn around, all we see is evil and violence and murders of police and overthrown cities and burnings of buildings and people shooting. And it's almost like in my vision, all that stuff was just snuffed and silenced. And even though the devil's always going to try, I, I just feel like there's going to be a move of God so strong and so big that the devil's just literally going to be squashed in the middle of all of this beautiful time of, of empowerment of God's people and just wanted to get it on a video so that we can put it back and look at it later rather than just writing the notes down like my wife and I've been doing on some of my other visions I just wanted to try to put it in my own words I'm sorry that I rambled so long because I know I might not even be able to send this video now but I just wanted to get it out there I love you, Pop. And baby, I thank God for you. I thank God for for your faith. And no matter what comes our way, you allow me to lead in the way God has called us to lead and you support that and are behind that. I thank you and I, I love you, baby. And I thank you for allowing me and helping me to be the man that God called me to be. I love y'all so much.